Hello and welcome to today's League of Legends Roundup. We're going to cover the games that took place this morning in the LCK LPL. Um, give you some, you know, stars of the day. And uh, give you a sneak peek of tomorrow's games across not only the LPL and LCK, but also the LEC. If you're new to this channel, just one moment, I'm going to move the mic. Damn it. Um... If you're new to this channel because you have had an influx of subscribers from Reddit, um, I do this every day, the roundup, where I do cover all four regions. If you want to participate in the predictions for the sneak peek, they're on the Discord. Um, the Discord link is in the description below. There is a channel where you post your predictions, and we keep track. I post the standings every day. I update them. So um, there's a point system and all that. Uh, later today, my power rankings will come out. So all the power rankings listed on here. Our power rankings that are going to be changed, hypothetically, depending on who it is, um, 24 hours, I mean, not even 24 hours, four hours from now. So, LCK, T1 versus Kwangdong. T1, fifth in the power rankings, nine and one. The Freaks, four and six. T1 get past them, two to one. Gumiushi, 11, 10, and 14 in the three game series. Um, playing Draven a lot. I believe all three games he played Draven. 27% of the team's damage leading the way. Owner, 8, 8, and 19. 87% KP for the team. Um, Fate. Fate had the best scoreline out of anybody in the whole damn series. 15, 3, and 12 in the mid lane for um, K, uh, Kwangdong. Played a great, great series despite losing. It was definitely a... Um, you know, a wake-up call almost for me because, honestly, I've, I've felt like Fate has left a lot to be desired recently. I mean, actually, I'll split long, and this was maybe his best series of the split. Um, Fate and Owner end up being on the stars of the day from this one. KT do quick work of HLE 2-0, aiming 11-2-7 with 86% KP for the squad. Vikla 2-4-10 in mid with 33% of the team's damage, despite not getting a lot of kills. His uh, Talia was on point in game two in a big way. Um, Chioni, 4-4-3 four, four, and three for HLE with 40% of the team's kills. Um, they, uh, I mean, they really struggled in this one, to say the very least. They, uh, they are not very good. They are not in a good place. So Rascal, um, Rascal did well um, in top for KT. So he ends up being star of the day, and then aiming was good, and life, I think, went 0-1 in like 25 or something. So he ends up being the support of the day. LPL, FPX versus anyone's legend, the match of the day for me going into it. FPX 24th in the power rankings at the time, anyone's legend 7th. Summit would go 10-3, I mean 10-6 and 13 in top with 28% of the team's damage. I believe he picked NAR in all three games. Care. 13, 8, and 21 in mid. ZDZ did do very well in top lane for anyone's legend, going 10, 7, and 12. Um, actually, really, there are many, there are three of the four top laners today in the LPL played fantastic, which we'll get to in a second. So, um, the only person that comes from that game and ends up being a star of the day is Hung. Hung played well for um, FPX. I think he went like 3, 2, and something, where um, Mako did not have as sexy of a stat line. EDG versus LGD, EDG 9th, uh, easy 2-0 over LGD, I mean beat the crap out of them. Viper 13-0 and 14 in the AD carry roll, 77 KP. I believe Scout went 12-0 and 9 in mid. Um, Flandre 4-1 and 9 in top with 29% of the team's damage leading the way. Flandre ends up being star of the day. Uh, Scout, Viper. Hai Chao was the best player for LGD, 3, 4, and 2 in mid with 28% of the team's damage. Hai Chao follows up a good performance in their last series with a good one today despite losing against a very good team. I mean, got blown out and his stat line isn't that bad. Um, you'll notice Junji is on here, not JJ. Um, yesterday, I mean, what the thing is, my, my sneak peeks are done now instead of later. So um, I don't know the roster really going into it. Um and JJ didn't play, Junjia did. So that was a good change for EDG. I felt like JJ was probably the weakest player on the team right now, playing-wise. And um, given that they were, you know, 6-4, and four, they need to get wins and, and right the ship here. So that was a good move. Um, I'm still unsure if it was because of play or if it was because of, um, you know, COVID. I don't know. 
Sneak peek, LCK tomorrow. Actually, all four games in the East are very good. Um, very close. The worst team, at least right now, on my power rankings would be LNG because they're not on there. Um, but the other seven teams are. Um, obviously, this changes, though. Um, so, Sandbox, 18th. Gen G, 3rd. Sandbox, 7-3. Gen G, 9-1. Uh, Sandbox beat HLE 2-0 in their last time out on the Rift. Gen G beat Nongshim 2-0. They played last week, day one, Gen G winning 2-0, Ruler going 14-3 and 13. I believe last week I did say Closer versus Trovi was what I wanted to watch, and I want to watch it again. Closer played very well despite losing against Gen G. He was the star mid laner of the week for the, the LCK for the second consecutive week. So um, maybe he can figure it out and figure out how to get past Gen G in this one. Or at least not get blown out because I believe they lost in under 20 minutes in one of the games. So that was, I mean, really bad. DRX versus Dom Juan. DRX 6 and 5, 21st in the power rankings. Dom Juan 8 and 3 and 6th. Fred at Breon would lose to DRX 2 1 the last time DRX were on the rift. And Nong Shim played Dom Juan and lost 2 0. Week 4, day 2 is when they played in summer. DRX winning 2 1. Pioshik 8 3 and 24 in that one. I am watching Pioshik versus Canyon. I really hope after the Juhan experiment last series where they almost lost to Fred Ibrion, they go with Pioshik and continue to because I have I thought Juhan was not as good as I mean, shoot. I don't think Juhan's as good as Pioshik. I haven't been a big Juhan fan even during MSI I wasn't. Um, which upset some PSG fans, but that was what it was. And um I think Pioshik is is Really good. He ints sometimes, but I think he is really good when he's at his best. LPL. Weebo versus Thundertalk. Weebo 17th. Thundertalk 16th. Weebo 6 and 4. Thundertalk 4 and 5. Um, Weebo upset Victory 5, the first team in my power rankings, 2 to 1 last time they were on the Rift. Uh, Thundertalk beat OMG 2 1. Week 2, day 5 of spring was the last time they played. Weebo winning 2 to 1. Angel going 11, 6 and 15. Looking at that roster and then the best five that Thundertalk can throw out there right now, it is a completely different roster. All five players from that Thundertalk roster in week two are not the best five in my opinion right now. I would have Kepler and Yao Yao over um, Puff and Southwind and Bot. And then you have um, Hoya in for New, Beshwan in for Frigid, and um, UCAL in for Captain. So that's kind of how it is right now. We'll see how that goes. Angel versus UCAL is who I want to watch. Angel being the star last time around. And UCAL now being there instead of um, Captain. Victory 5 versus LNG. Like I said, V5 first in the power rankings. 9-1. and one. LNG 6-5 and five outside of the power rankings. Uh, Victory 5, like I said, lost to Weibo 2-1. LNG beat Ultra Prime 2-0. Week 6, day 7 was the last time they played. Victory 5 winning 2-0. Photic 19-5 and 17 in that series. Want to watch Karsa versus Tarzan. It's pretty much, I mean, I had to pick one, but I would say it's a jungle mid versus jungle mid. Um, these are all veterans. We'll see how it goes. Tarzan and Doombi and Karsa and Rookie. Who can get it done? You know, Tarzan really showed up their last series against Ultra Prime, but it was against Ultra Prime. Um, if they go with Panda C in top, I think that he is still not very good. So it's a matter of um, taking advantage of that. Ultra Prime could not. They did not give Zoom an opportunity to dominate the game through top lane. And they should have done more to do that. So um, we'll see how this one goes. The LEC, the final game of the first round robin. BDS versus SK. BDS 1 and 8. SK 3 and 6. BDS lost to Rogue last Sunday. SK beat XL. Week 6, day 2 of spring was the last time they played. SK winning. Sirtus 4, 1 and 5. We're going to watch Nuclear Imp versus Sirtus again because this last time SK beat BDS with less kills. So they did less. Um, obviously, kills aren't the end all be all. Drakes, turrets gold everything falls into that kills are just one metric um but i think it is a indicator of how that the game was close as hell and Surtis was the only one getting kills and doing work for sk so if nuclear can keep them under control we'll see what happens bds obviously on struggle street misfits versus excel both five and four as misfits come on strong excel falling off the wagon um, XL, like I said, lost to SK. Misfits beat G2 in the final game of week five, right? Week four. Three, two, 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 week four. Um, 
Week 6, Day 1 was when they played in spring. Misfits winning. Batheo 6 0 and 15 on a rise. Um, Schlatan versus Markun is what I want to watch. Two young junglers trying to gank and make things happen. I want to see what happens. 12.13 coming out. Volley Bear getting nerfed. We'll see how that affects Markun. A big pick for him. And Batheo relied on the Corky last week in a very big way, and he might not have that at his disposal this time around. I think Batheo is better than just like using a Corky, but nevertheless, um, it had helped them right the ship. Vitality versus Mad Lions. Vitality 5-4, and four, Mad 6-3, 20th in the power rankings. Vitality beat Fnatic, Mad Lions beat Astralis. Week 8, day 1 was the last time they played. Mad Lions winning, Unforgiven going 10-1-10. We are going to watch Perks versus Niski. Two veterans in the mid lane. Um, despite Mad Lions destroying Vitality the last time they played, Mad Lions did not have Niski. They had Reeker, so they're even better than they were before. So, Vitality, this is a test. You know you're 5-4. and four. Can you keep up with the, I would say, fourth best team in the LEC? Um, if you watched my Who's Going to Worlds video, I mean, I have Mad Lions ahead of Vitality for that reason. I know some people have Mad Lions in the top three, and I wouldn't argue against that right now. Um, so we'll see if Vitality have what it takes. G2, uh, four and five, 11th in the power rankings. That will not be the case later today. I promise you that. I think I'm going to give them the old algorithm, uh, slap on the wrist. And it's what the algorithm says is what they're going to get. Um, so G2, four and five, Astralis, four and five. G2, like I said, lost to Misfits. Astralis lost to Mad. Week 5, Day 2 is the last time they played. G2 winning. Flacket going 7, 2, and 6. Uh, Flacket versus Kabe. Everything goes through Kabe if Astralis wants to win. Dajor played really well last week, not taking anything away from him. But um, Caps versus Dajor, I think Caps is going to absolutely dumpster Dajor. So it's more of a matter of can Kabe make up the difference? Probably not, but we'll see given G2 has really, really hit a wall. Um, you know, some people think that I'm afraid of G2's fan base. I am not at all afraid of G2's fan base. They freaking stink. They stink. They're awful right now. Frankly, during MSI, they only did well because they were in a hot streak. And the second they started losing, they imploded because they can't handle a loss. There you go. My real feelings on G2. So, Rogue versus Fnatic. Rogue, 25th. Fnatic, 15th. Rogue, 7-2. and two. Fnatic, 5-4. and four. Rogue beat BDS, like I said earlier. Fnatic lost to Vitality. They are rematching after the playoffs where Rogue reverse swept them and won 3-2 to two in winner finals um, before then losing. So, um, Malring went 19-9-41 and 41 in that series. Um, he had the best KDA out of anybody, 19-9-41. So, we're going to watch Larson versus Humanoid to... Um, Mid laners that have been battling for the number two slot behind Caps for a long time, and it continues to happen that way. Um, upset versus Comp, I think Upset has the has the edge. I think Hilly has the edge. Um, I think Odo has the edge over Wonder. And in the jungle, it's pretty close. I think Malrang and Razork are both very similar, as are the mid laners. So I think it does come down to jungle mid in that one, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. But like I said when this video started, uh, go to the Discord if you want to predict games. Not only is there the point system with the standings, but I also have a column for winning percentage. So you can start at any time you want, and you'll be able to see, oh, well, wow, my winning percentage is better than anyone else's. You can do whatever you want. Uh, people talk about games all day, every day, if the games are on. This morning we had people talking about these games as they were going on. Um, I know some individuals want to do a watch party on the weekend, but not a lot of people really were in, in, into that at the time. So if you want to do a watch party or you want to join the Discord, people are willing to do stuff like that. I want to facilitate having a nice, fun community going on. So if you want to do that, do that. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and uh, later today, stay tuned because my power rankings will come out, my top 25.